Yo, your boy is back with some budget of fire. We got the Keychron Q2 bare bones with knob. Of course, you gotta do with the knob for $159. For $10 more, you can actually get switches and keycaps. Let's get into it. I've worked with the Qcon before to look at their first custom board, the Q1, which is a 75% competitor to the Glorious GMMK Pro. That keyboard was a little bit rough around the edges because although it provided more flexibility, that flexibility came at the cost of sound because it was very hollow and pingy and required heavy modding to make it sound good. The community, including myself, provided a lot of feedback with our testing and I'm happy to see that a lot of those changes were implemented here in the Qcon Q2. This video is not sponsored by Keychron, but we do have a channel sponsor though, and that's Cable Mod. More about them in a minute. The Key2 is a 65% keyboard with offset navigation and offset arrows and a knob instead of a top right blocker. This definitely appeals to the market of brand new enthusiasts that just want a keyboard with cool features. The knob, the gasket mounting, the hot swap, the offset, and heavyweight aluminum. 3.1 pounds, 1.4 kilos. Takes all the boxes for someone that wants a new keyboard, and it doesn't look as boring as the Freebird TKO, which is a more traditional, and they had no knob. This keyboard honestly blew me away with what was achievable stock. It doesn't really keep up with the Iconix fully pre-built boards, but the stabilize here are probably 80% of what you would want, with the exception of the spacebar, which is passable at best with maybe 70. Trust these numbers, they're researched, backed by science and peer reviewed because I'm a scientist. Let's talk about the look of this keyboard. Right here, we have a pretty slim bezel board and we have a knob, offset arrows, offset nav, and it's going to be a 65% keyboard, which is going to be tolerable for most people. With a 6% keyboard, you're giving away the navigation here as well as the arrows, so it's not very popular. This keyboard has the ideal look nailed. People coming into the hobby don't want five to 10 keyboards, they just want one. And they more likely than not like to keep their arrow keys. They want something fancy, like a knob or an OLED in the top right. This inoffensive small footprint with a 65% keyboard rather than a 75% is going to make a lot of people happy. It more or less has slim bezels, has a minimal aesthetic, understated knob that's not too flashy. That's what the people want. Let's talk about the build of this keyboard. Like I said, it is bare bones, but things are already assembled. No installing gaskets, no screwing anything in, no accidentally putting in a daughter board upside down. The pieces look like they fit together nicely and there are no glaring defects as far as I can tell. The design language is very similar to the Q1. The anodization finish is what I expect out of these boards. It feels smooth, but if you look closely, there's some granularity. It doesn't really bother people, but I have to, uh, I have to mention it for the nerds. Before we get to the sound, let's just let you listen. I've kept you waiting for long enough. Let's go. Now you heard the sound, pretty good, huh? That's with uh, stock stabilizers, the stock PCB foam, case foam, stock gaskets and everything. All I had to do was throw in looped and film JWKs, which are a pretty standard switch that anyone can achieve, anyone can buy, anyone can mod, and they can sound pretty solid. The keyboard comes with pre loop stabilizers and they definitely made an attempt here. A valiant one for sure. There is grease on the corn on the wire and there is a, there's lube on the stem. The L shift. Enter, backspace. They all sound pretty good. Where it falls apart is a space bar. It needs some help. That may be due to the plate design, the PCB foam, the case foam, the gasketing. But today we're only gonna look at everything in its stock form. We're not gonna modify anything just yet. The alphas, however, sound freaking amazing. The weakness in the alphas would be the R4. There's R1, R2, R3, R4. Down here in R4, it's definitely more hollow than R3. It just probably has to do with the case foam in the case itself. I'm gonna let you hear how it sounds next to my Freebird TKO.
the Freebird TKL is kind of tolerably hollow, right? Compared to the Alpha Zone Q2, the Freebird TKL sounds kind of rough. This definitely sounds more full. And if you remember my last video, I mentioned there's new school and old school. I think the new school is really gonna like this sound because it sounds foamy, it sounds full. Whereas the Freebird TKL sounds a little bit more old school and technically worse, but it sounds more fun to my ears. I honestly think new school enthusiasts are really gonna like this one. In terms of the value, I mentioned this before, this is $159 for what seems to be a baby Chimera layout with a knob instead of the cannons in the top right. Kind of a little mix of the Chimera 65 as well as the Sat 75. It's not the slimmest of footprints because of the offset arrows and the offset nav and the top right knob, but I still think it has a small enough footprint to not look out of place on your desk. Honestly, it feels like a bad deal for $159 considering you can get some throwaway keycaps sorry Keycon, and switches for another $10 in Gatoran Browns. You can use the PPD keycaps if you're gaming so you don't shine your fancy ABS keycaps. For $159, you would definitely compare this with the other affordable 65% keyboards like the KBD67 Lite as well as the Icky68 Aurora. Those are like $129. I think the KBD67 Lite went down to $109. So this is almost double the price at this point. But the main issue with the other boards is that they're plastic. What if you want something thick, heavy, and feels cold up against your cheek in the morning? I'm sorry, I got a little weird there. The pandemic winter got me feeling some type of way. I think this board here has a solid place in the ever-expanding category of budget custom mechanical keyboards. Of course, this isn't the $20 Taobao keyboard that you can buy and wait eight weeks for, but this is a solid offering from Keychron. With all the money that you save from buying this all-in-one package, you know what you could buy? A cable from our sponsor, CableMod. CableMod has expanded the product line to include pre-made coil cables that are sold on Amazon. So you can do your custom thing, or you can just buy one that's already set and get it in two days. It's pretty cool. You can get your custom cable fix even faster. The fin finish on these cables are top notch, the coils are tight, and the quick connectors fit like a glove. Check out the links in the description below to grab a cable from them today. I think the main reason why this keyboard is so monumental is because Keychron is a bigger company, right? And they've stepped into our space, right? With their 75% with a knob, and everyone's trying to do that, but they're actually listening. After Glorious dropped the GMMK Pro, we thought they'd improve things and make an R2 revision. They have not. Ever since their launch, Keychron has come in with the Q1. Although it wasn't the best product, it was a little bit hollow, we did give them feedback and they've implemented a lot of the feedback in the Q2. The Q1 was very hollow and pingy. The gasketing was quite insufficient. You need a lot more material in the case. And that's all here. The Q2 is not perfect, but the upgrades and changes they've made show that they're listening. And beyond that, they're already working on a Q3 and that's almost ready to go. That's what you want to see in a niche that's rapidly growing. It's really hard for these smaller designers to keep up with the demand from all the people coming into the hobby. As of today, I can definitely recommend this keyboard for a beginner or an enthusiast friend or a sibling that wants to get into keyboards. The components are solid enough, like the stabilizers in the case, that you don't have to do very much modding. You can just throw switches in here and they're ready to go. So if you watch too many Shube sound tests and you have bought too many switches, you have some old lube switches and you can throw them in here, or you tried the Novel Keys, maybe you tried Novel Keys Cherry Taro and didn't really like it, you can throw that onto this board and now you have a full board for a loved one, a friend to use. And it's definitely gonna be way better than their pre-built gamer keyboards. And then they can be off to the races and help you enter raffles for artisans because you're an addict. That's right, Cho. Now, if you wanna learn about how to modify this keyboard with our tape mod, silicone, PD foam, whatever we can do to try to make this sound more full and less pingy, make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss when the video is launched. We're definitely gonna take this thing apart and see what's really underneath the hood. Today's showcase was more like a first look and to see what's achievable stock. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.